What if it's true? Do I need to remind you what is out there? Once upon a time, I had somebody that I cared about. And in this world, that sort of shit's good for one thing. Getting you killed. With the extreme overexposure of the zombie genre, post-apocalyptic storytelling hasn't done anything fresh or original in quite some time. That was true until critically acclaimed development team Naughty Dog decided to sink their teeth into morbid fantasy to deliver an innovative take on the genre. The Last of Us is set 20 years following the outbreak of a real-world parasitic fungus known as Cordyceps, which mutates the brain of its human host in order to spread the infection to the rest of the population. In this what-if scenario, the player takes control of Joel, a veteran of the former world who is tasked with escorting a 14-year-old girl named Ellie to a rebel group known as the Fireflies. What ensues is an epic on a low-key scale as Joel and Ellie venture across America that is now reclaimed by nature. From their perspective, you learn how different groups cope with the downfall of civilization and how far humans are willing to go to survive in what was once a thriving society. The story places a key emphasis on the father-daughter relationship of Joel and Ellie, voiced by Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson respectively. Without giving too much away, the story constantly moves forward with no hesitation, as it introduces you to various characters and settings to make the world feel both truly real and immersive. This is one of the most emotional and engaging video game narratives of the year, and arguably of all time. There is never a moment where you feel that the game is padding itself out to extend its already sufficient running time. After an unbelievable and gripping opening, the game does slow down substantially in order to establish the world the characters live in. I can't. You just give me a couple of <laughs> But at no point is the game inconsistently paced, as the heightening of action and more relaxed moments come and go at a pleasurable rate. The character development of the two leads is incredibly fleshed out, as their stories and connections with the world make them feel more than simply video game creations. They feel like real people and act with realistic emotion that reinforces your sympathy towards their troubling situation. Every location is exciting and interesting to explore, with some outstanding environmental storytelling that leaves you pondering over what exactly happened in these places. One environmental story that follows throughout an entire chapter explores a man who created a society in the sewer. It's these little touches that make the game feel unique and unlike anything you've seen before. Environmental storytelling, to me, is something that only video games can truly do well. The last time I saw it, this greatly executed was the original Bioshock, but even then, The Last of Us manages to excel beyond that. The attention to detail is unlike anything I've seen, as even the subtlest details give both life and meaning to the world. Joel will scratch his head and pull up the shoulder of his backpack, while Ellie will poke around at pre-apocalyptic items and scenery, begging for her curiosity to be quenched. These little actions go a long way in making everything feel dynamic and fluent. It's almost hard to tell it's even a video game when taking into account the character's interactions with the world. Apologies for the pompous word, but cutscenes are also exquisitely well done. Dialogue and conversations are brilliantly acted and delivered, as the cast does a tremendous job in selling the believability of the characters. There is something so awe-inspiring about watching these scenes. And you just hang back like I told you to. Visually, the sight of nature reclaiming man-made structures is aesthetically poetic. The foliage, weather, buildings, and the fascinating take on natural lighting makes you want to stop and observe the graphically stunning world that is perpetuated by the finest details. Every environment feels different and unique, and there's never the feeling that you're treading the same land. Both the characters and the world are deeply enriching, as they add a sense of profoundness and admiration to character and environmental design in video games. So is that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. But oh, man, you can't deny that view. The gameplay is brutal, but also seamless and exhilarating. 
There is such satisfaction in being able to move around undetected, and there's also something undeniably empowering about being able to take down a group of enemies without dying multiple times. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to contextualized violence, that is, violence that makes sense within the situation, The Last of Us completely justifies and reinforces why violence is an important part of the game's fiction. Very few games are able to execute survival combat as well as The Last of Us. By collecting resources such as alcohol, blades, binding and tissue, you're able to craft health kits, explosives, molotovs and even the occasional precious shiv for silent takedowns. The intensity of combat comes from having to run away while frantically looking for items to craft weapons that will give you an extra few seconds of life. I have been waiting a long time for a game to make me feel incredibly desperate in a combat situation. While on easier difficulty settings crafting weapons is more frequent, on survivor mode, the game completely minimizes resources in order to make you think about what you truly need in the situation. In gunfights, shooting feels just as intense as it becomes a priority to make each shot count. Mindlessly pulling the trigger is no good, as the first sound of an empty gun sees enemies become less cautious of you. Shit! I know that sound. I got you now, motherfucker! However, the AI is both hit and miss. Largely speaking, the human enemy AI is intelligent, as they always communicate as the situation changes. They will flank you, flush you out of cover, look for you when they hear a noise, and even fear for their life when you have the upper hand. <laughs> Allies do their best to help by reacting to Joel whether he's in stealth or in combat. Ellie will give you med kits, throw bricks to distract enemies, and even occasionally stab someone to death when you're too busy broiling with someone else. That said, when in stealth, Ellie can't be detected by enemies when she's in their line of sight, or, as an immersion breaker, even when she's standing right next to them. And as smart as the enemies are, they will occasionally have a tendency to bum rush you. However, I wasn't all that affected by the AI issues, as it's usually just an occasional grievance, and I do respect that the game is being ambitious with its programming. Infected enemies are incredibly horrifying. In most cases of the game, you can run away and hide while enemies search for you, but in the case of runners, you just have to keep running. And fast. Clickers on the other hand are slower, and use sound to locate the player because they're blind. But once they grab you, you're basically dead. The infected gameplay is some of the most disturbing and unsettling moments of the game due to the painful screams and screeches from the human host trying to escape. It's something you have to experience to understand the shocking feeling it leaves you with. Again, the only issue I had was that the clickers on normal difficulty don't always react when you're literally next to them, but on survivor mode that practically fixes the issue. The expertly balanced encounters between human and infected enemies keeps the game from feeling repetitive, and most of all, it continues the horror of not knowing what you'll bump into next. Lastly, the accentuation of sound is phenomenal. Breaking a skull with a brick, knocking over bottles by accident, hearing gunshots swizz past your head, or listening to clicking sounds from the dark corners of the hall enhance the immersion while also adding another layer to the gameplay. You're encouraged to listen to your surroundings and watch your step, as even the simplest creak sends screams and bullets coming your way. The game does implement the listen mode which allows you to see enemy outlines from behind walls, but you'll find yourself using it infrequently and only in the most desperate times. If you're like me, you're likely to disable it along with avoiding certain upgrades and ignoring your torch that enemies seem to disregard anyway, in an attempt to make the game even more intense and harrowing. The soundtrack by Gustav Santalana, if I could pronounce that, is gripping and expressive and gives the game its own distinct tone. It's not obtrusive and instead blends with the atmosphere. We're square. We're square. And get the fuck out of my town.
in conclusion, The Last of Us is something you have to experience to understand what makes it one of the best gaming experiences of all time. This year has seen some incredible games that will live with me for a very long time, but no game in my 15 years playing them has come truly this close to absorbing me into its world to find every last detail in addition to making me emotionally fulfilled. Naughty Dog has created a living, breathing world that goes far beyond what anyone could hope for in a video game. The Last of Us shows humanity after humanity has been destroyed. The end of the world is just a silhouette for what this game truly encapsulates. And I doubt that we have seen the last of it. Let's get a move on.